Fantasy with pigeons. Hmm. Count me in. Welcome back to the channel, Book Dragons. I'm so glad you're here with me. I'm going to be reviewing Wizard of the Pigeons by Megan Lindholm today. And I'm really excited to talk with you about this. This is a little bit different book for me. I wasn't quite sure what to expect going into it. It was my patron pick for the first quarter of 2024. And I'm, I'm really glad I ended up reading it. And so let's go ahead and start talking about it. Wizard of the Pigeons is an urban fantasy set in modern-day Seattle, Washington. And I really found the story to be quite unique. I've never read an urban fantasy like this one, partly because the main character is homeless. I thought that was really cool. That's not something that you see every day in fantasy novels. Wizard is the main character of the story. You will find out his actual name, or what may be his actual name, later on in the story, but for the majority of the book, he's just called Wizard. He has a friend named Cassie that has been helping him get his bearings in the city of Seattle. And there's another wizard that is kind of a little bit more aloof named Rasputin. He tends to treat Wizard as just the new kid on the block, which he kind of is, but Rasputin doesn't really give him the time of day, whereas Cassie is more than willing to help him out if she can. And then you will see very, very minor characters pop up at different points in the story, just as a way to keep Wizard's story moving along and, and give him people to interact with. And so the basic plot of the story goes something like this. Wizard is new to the game of magic, so as I mentioned, he is the new kid on the block and he's learning what his boundaries are, he's learning what he can't do, what he can't do. He's learning to create rules for himself to keep him from spiraling out of reality and losing access to his magic. He's a gifted truth teller and pigeon whisperer. He feeds the pigeons all over Seattle and speaks to them and they do things for him and his world goes awry when a mysterious entity pops up and awakens memories from his past, or what seems to be his past. And so the story is really about Wizard coming to grips with who he is and his part to play in this grand game of magic in the city of Seattle, coping with elements from his past in order to defeat this mysterious entity. And the particular type of magic that Wizard uses is truth magic. So he might be talking to a person and he comes into some knowledge about what's going to happen in their future or problems that they are personally wrestling through that they need answers to. And he is given the information that they need and the requirement of his magic is that when he knows something, he has to tell it. He doesn't have a choice. He's required to, to share that information with that person if he discovers it. And the revelations that he gives to people can drastically alter their life. And if he decides to keep quiet and not tell somebody something of their, of their future or how to resolve something in their life, he risks losing his magic. That is one of the requirements of the magic is to, is to always tell everything that he knows. And the other wizards in Seattle have different abilities as well. Cassie's is centered around storytelling. She's always looking for the next angle to a story or the next nursery rhyme or word game that will evoke something in somebody's life. The themes that the book explorers are things like dealing with mental illness and post-traumatic stress disorder and the themes of homelessness and poverty are very strong as well. There is a strong focus on the homeless community 
in the city of Seattle. And so it really makes everything feel real and authentic and uncomfortable at times because you're seeing the way that these homeless people are treated. And as a wizard, he gets some special privileges. You know, people look up to him and everything, even though he's homeless. But there are elements of the city that start to put him in a bad light and people start treating him differently. You really start to see human inhumanity towards other humans, and it's just a really graphic look at the realities of homelessness and extreme poverty. So I thought that was really well done. So let's talk now about what I liked about the book. I really liked the writing style. It was clear, fresh, to the point, Megan Lindholm is also known by another pen name, Robin Hobbs. So if you've read any of Robin Hobbs' writings, this is her, but just under a different name. And I could kind of see a few elements from time to time that I picked up in Robin Hobbs' writings while reading this book. So that was really neat. Uh, the character development I thought was good, even though it was quite a short book, I thought the character development was quite well done. It primarily focused on Wizard the entire book, which is expected, but you get glimpses of the other characters in the book as well, like Cassie and a romantic interest that Wizard gets involved with. So you, you see glimpses of other characters and the information you get about them does make sense, but the most development is focused on Wizard. I found the story very interesting and unique. I love the city of Seattle, and so having a story that's set in the city of Seattle was quite cool. And I also really enjoyed the magic system. I thought it was well done. I thought it was well thought out. And then let's talk about some of the things I didn't like. One of the things I didn't like, again, talking about the magic system, was the fact that we didn't really get a whole lot of information on exactly how the magic works. It's clear that Wizard comes into special knowledge about different people that he interacts with, but we don't really find out where that knowledge comes from or how he got it, how he even came into his powers of being a wizard. And sometimes it's hard to tell whether he actually is a wizard or whether it's a figment of his imagination that's wrapped up in his reality. Uh, the reality of him being homeless and in poverty and not knowing what his life is going to be like on a day-to-day -day basis. That part kind of remains unclear. So while it seems like the magic system is actually real, you're never quite sure. And I think I would have liked to have known a little bit more for sure on that, whether or not I'm seeing actual magic or if he's just imagining everything. I think it's real magic, but it is kind of hard to tell at times. And then the other thing that I didn't like really has to do with the medium that I read the book with. I did do the audiobook, so that leaves a little bit to be desired for me when it comes to fiction. It's rare for me to find a series that I will only ever listen to on audiobook, and this is definitely not one of those books that I would do on audio, again, because I do feel like I got lost at times, and I kept having to go back and listen to something again. I'm like, wait, I feel like I missed that. I'm kind of confused. So that's not really a fault of the book. It's just a fault of the audiobook. And I think for me, I would read this physically or on ebook if I did it again. And I think I do want to read it again because I just don't feel like I got everything out of the book that I could have gotten had I read it physically. So, what's my rank for the book? I'm putting this in my shiny tier. It's a great read, but it's definitely not one of the better books I've read. And... I think I might enjoy it more on a reread, but for this first reading, I thought it was just fine. It's going in my shiny tier. So that's all I've got, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you heard of this book or read this book before? What are your thoughts on it? Does it sound like a book that you would enjoy if you have not read it yet? Let me know that in the comments as well. 
Until next time, guys, I hope you read more books. I'll talk with you soon.